Now entering the Bitcoin Podcast Network. It's a Bitcoin Podcast. The only one that's making your money is you. So No, I'm going to keep going. It's like, I, just, I just hate starting a podcast like that. Hey, everybody. I feel like every podcast on the planet starts that way. It's Say, such a cliche. Uh, hey, one guy out there listening to this. Yeah. Hey, you, <laughs> George. Thanks for, tu- <laughs> thanks for tuning in this week. But anyways. We should all talk to George today. Yeah. We're talking it's, to it's, George. It's episode 280, guys. Episode 280 of the Bitcoin Podcast. And we do you weekly shows. Means- so divide that this by podcast 52. ends in zero, so it's special. Yeah, that's right. Um, it's a seminal moment. I I remember yesterday, it was just episode one. <laughs> seminal. When we didn't know how to podcast at all, and me and Corey were talking to the same mic and almost making out. Anyway, that was me and Cello. So you uh, miss those days? Is that what you're saying? You miss I, that, like, making out one microphone podcast? I do miss them. Do? Our mustaches would graze. <laughs> that's pretty <laughs> close man anyways because i'm looking sorry. at a pretty short fucking mustache there <laughs> sorry audience everyone this is episode 280 i'm the host that talks first uh Dim- of the big one podcast uh, dimitric dimitric uh ferguson and uh the host that talks second uh dr Corey petty is at a wedding uh, a close mutual friend of ours is tying the knot and he got invited and i didn't so i don't know how close of a mutual friend that is <laughs> That is, or he's closer to Corey than he is to me. But anyways, um, everyone else is like, they called in. They were like, Corey was out and the community stepped up to the plate. Community slash other hosts that you know slash everyone. So why doesn't everyone just go ahead and introduce themselves and then we'll hop into this, to this shit that we're going to talk about. Don't all speak at once. I'm Colin Couche. I do hashing it out. My mouth is full, but I'm doing it just to step up to the plate. <laughs> okay. You guys know Colin. And we got we got Andy. Hey, guys. How you doing? I'm Andy uh, in the Slack. I'm a Bitcoin podcast regular, but not a regular guest. So I'm uh, in the community. I help with uh, a few things around here. I've been starting to do a little bit on the Twitters. So if you've noticed uh, uh, a little more frequent content, that's me. Uh, and then I work in the fintech industry, and I'm a crypto enthusiast, and uh, yeah, I do a, a variety of things around the space. So glad to be here. Welcome. And we have Exiled Surfer himself. Hey, everybody. I'm a crypto anarchist and a cypherpunk wannabe. Happy to hang out with people who know what they're talking about today. And last but not least... Wayne, we, Wayne, yes to yeah. crypto, back in the heezy. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a big yes fan. I'm a big crypto fan. I want everybody to say yes to crypto. There we go. So we got a full, we got a full crew to here to, to discuss many, many things. And this is the perfect crowd to discuss this thing that I keep. So when you're into crypto and nobody else in your life is like your real life, your meat space life. And they keep telling you things like, why are you so invested in this thing? Like, what if it goes to zero? And then I always do this weird thing. I look to the left and I think about like, I quickly go through the scenarios 
that would go. Oh, yeah, that'll make it go to zero. And I can't find any outside of, like, I don't know, something very cataclysmic that would make a lot of other things in life go to zero. And so... What if we, why don't we do some like a thought experiment here between the four of us? Like, what could cause this great experiment here that we're all so subscribed to to go to zero and just fade to nothing? I'm talking about price, zero dollars, zero value, zero. Nobody I don't gives know. a I just shit sold about all my it coins. anymore. I just sold everything. I'm a new coiner again. You sold it all? What? Sold Explain all. yourself. Yeah. It's at it's at around 10k. That's like a magic number, and like psychologically, people seem to want to like gravitate towards magic numbers. Plus, I broke even finally, and uh, I have not gained a greater insight into the inner workings of how like Bitcoin and Ethereum are working, and I just don't think they're it. So I'm gonna go ahead and invest my money in myself, which is better spent. Oh wow, we got a wise motherfucker in here. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, Colin. Um, why though? That's like, pretty. That's pretty amazing. I, uh, you know, um, you don't hear many people that sold it all, dude. That's uh, I did it last night. I mean, I broke even. It was like my promise to myself once I realized what was actually going on and and some of the architectural decisions being made, uh, or that were that we're still clinging to religiously that are just not necessary. And I'm just like, okay. Well, I need to. Uh, I need to. I need to really, really, really assess if this stuff actually has value, and I, I don't think it actually has as much value as people think it does. It's definitely not one Bitcoin is equal to 10, 10, 10 k. But you know, people will. I mean, that's what the actual like exchange rate is. But yeah, there's 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 issues with the the vision and the technology. They don't align. So. Um, the technology cannot support the vision that people are trying to push. So eventually people are going to come to the realization that's the case. And at the time in which they do, uh, hopefully the type price will drop but because honestly, I think there's better technology on the horizon. So, so I'm just going to invest okay. myself for now. It's not that I don't support cryptocurrency okay, so, in, okay. in general. All right. So, but well, the, let's unpack do you that. Think that. Do you think that that, that technology is going to achieve the network effect? I mean, what nobody Get into that mic. Get into that mic, Exile Surfer. We can't hear you. Um, what nobody's been able to accomplish up until now is, is, is a network effect that matches Bitcoin's network effect or Ethereum's network effect. And so, I mean, you can, there's tons of what we all agree is, is maybe better technology out there or different, different implementations that, uh, that offer you know, throughput or whatever it is that you, that you want to do. There's been all these variations, but nobody's achieved the network effect. I'd really like to see how it is that you think that, that it, a better technology is going to accomplish that network effect. I mean, it doesn't matter. If the technology, matter? The, the, the technology can't support, I mean, fundamentally can't support the, the vision. So it doesn't matter. If they have, let me put it to you this way. Nobody reached the network effects of MySpace before Facebook. And eventually there's going to be a Facebook of cryptocurrency. We're just not there yet. Um, and hopefully I'm working at it. But um, the, you know, I mean, like Bitcoin is straight up geocities when it comes to like what this, what decentralized currency can be. And uh, Ethereum is definitely at the MySpace level. And we're still waiting for that, that Facebook moment where people just start adopting um, and scale. And we're not seeing that. You could clearly say we're not seeing that. So you talk about network effects, but I say they're actually ho hum compared to what they can be, and um, the barrier to, is a user experience problem. The barrier is a uh, a fundamental problem with the protocols themselves and them being synchronous and unable to scale to the degree that we need. And another problem is that we are married to a very, you know, the the Nakamoto consensus protocol is state heavy. Well, not state heavy. It's it's memory heavy it, it requires a lot of space a lot of syncing to be to be completely assured of of what you're doing and, and it, they have a lot of hacks to kind of get around that but ultimately the fact we can't run these clients on our phones is a, is a strong indicator that there's something wrong with the the way it's designed if we're going to align with the vision of a world payment mechanism so, and, so what um, about what about, well, hold on, hold on. about i've ABC's heard the blockchain phone I've heard the MySpace and Facebook comparison for network effects before. And in fact, I've used that argument myself and I like it. Um, it, it there's a lot of examples of something that is the first mover doesn't 
that has an advantage but doesn't retain the network's effects over time or even the second mover. However, crypto is different, Bitcoin uh, especially, in that like if I get off MySpace, I, I didn't lose anything. I lost my top six and the people who eventually left with me just came over and joined Facebook. And so I still have my social connections. And that wasn't like something of value. Whereas with Bitcoin, there's there's monetary value associated with it, whether or not that's um, justified at, at a level that that it is or mm -hmm. has been over the past two days or, or not. There's the perception of value and, and I can exchange that for my mortgage. I, I can go down that path. And, and that's a pretty different set of effects, Colin. So while I definitely agree, um, we haven't seen the the peak of the network effects. Uh, and, and I don't know, I'm not going to say, say, sit here and make a claim that Bitcoin isn't going to go to zero. I, I don't I know. know. I don't like, I mean, all that all that does all. is make make MySpace maximalists. And, and that means that people are literally more married to the platform they're they're used to or invested in it some, in some way. And which that's means, cute. Which but means they have a reason. It's going to go anywhere. But it means it has a reason that it has still monetary val value. Sure, yeah, I, I'm not disagreeing the technology, but it still has monetary value, and and that's yeah. that's an important component of this. Is the value is what powers the validation of the network, and and that's what gives it it, it, it self perpetuates, right? If it has value, then it has value because it's worth maintaining. And so so I, I totally agree with your technology assessment. Um, but that doesn't speak to the value of the coin. Uh, so you're so talking about a bootstrapping so. problem, really, though, because you're not actually talking about a network effect problem. You're talking about how do we get the value into the network to make the network self-perpetuating, and that is that is a very valid question. I mean, it's a solvable it's a solvable problem. I have to believe that at the company I work, I have to believe that. But yeah. well, that's um, what uh, every Ethereum project is doing right now: is how do we inject that value? How do we get actual users into our system? Yeah, but with those with those what those companies don't understand is you don't get to choose that you don't it's the people that use your thing that think it cool or not like that's that's literally all it boils down to and you can't say that at a room full of people that try to be so damn smart all the time because they're like what what do you so mean i have a question though. I'm like so, so, that, so, it's as simple like as that people got to use it and think it's cool it doesn't fucking matter what the technology does it really does people like don't have if, to use it enterprise has here's, to use it. here's my extent. argument against like i understand that bitcoin and ethereum they may be slack and and really slow when it comes to technologically um coming close to the vision that they've put out there of what they're trying to do but at the end of the day it's like technology doesn't always win like it doesn't like in the states we should have been using like vhs mag beta i'm sorry yeah. technology doesn't always win but it can lose and in this yeah, case, it's a loser. It, it means that it is literally limiting. We are literally limited by our protocols at this point. Like you literally cannot achieve the vision that you want. It's you're not going to be able to win with this technology. Period. I want to know. I want to know which vision it is that you think that Bitcoin is not going to accomplish. Well, oh, fair enough. If you're many... talking about the store of value, yeah. which is the newest, the newest, like oh, it's Bit Gold or whatever, then that's 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 one thing. Yeah, you could probably do that. Of course, you're dumping a ton of energy into it, but that could. Yeah, I'm sure maybe somebody could. There'll there'll be people maintaining that for a while. Uh, and if you ask me if it's going to zero, the answer is likely no. It's not ever going to go to absolute zero, or at least not in my lifetime. But um, it it is going to. I do think it's overvalued and overhyped for what 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 you're trying to do. Mm. When when they talk about things like global payment systems and stuff, and they have to literally go to a layer two solution, which doesn't really work that well, and has a bunch of other problems it's introducing, and makes a big user experience mess out of it. Um, and Here's this is like. A, I the thing like that keeps happening, then, then I'm saying that the very fundamental layer one protocol is I would, flawed. I would like to correct the myth that the layer two, the lightning network, doesn't work that well. It doesn't work that well for people trying to do ridiculous shit like buy Kia Optimas on the lightning network, which you were never supposed to do. You were supposed to buy your coffee on the lightning network, a $5 purchase. And if you look at the stats on purchases $10 and under, that shit is working like a fucking Mustang. A Shelby GT, baby. So that's what it was designed for. That's what it was built for. And that's what it's working great for. And that's what it was supposed to do. It was supposed to be like, hey, I got my coffee, my latte. All right. I'm going to go buy my latte on the Lightning Network. It's going to be great. And that's how I say latte. Okay. I got it's a two syllable word. 
in my like world. Like Maytag. <laughs> but that's what it was for. And then people are like, well, I can't buy my Maserati on the Lightning Network. And it's, it's like, not for that, you fucking dingus. Like, why don't you wait for the fees to go down and buy that on the Bitcoin Network? Like, that's what it was supposed to be for. And that's why I don't, it's, it's funny how messages get muddied over the years. I mean, I get it, but, you know, there's still things like, hey, why is their dressing so long? Like, weird stuff like that. Like, I can't just tweet this thing. Like, it's, it's, it's like, <laughs> that you know what I mean? Like, I saw that. I, I saw that tweet. tweet. There's a lot of weird, thing. I mean, yeah, you can, you can fit it right. in one tweet if, like, the whole tweet is your goddamn message, but, like, is your whole, whole goddamn address. <laughs> but, like, come on. Like, there, there's, it's just like, I'm not saying it's, like, bad. I love the fact that people are doing stuff on this, and I don't want to sound like I'm not supportive of that. In fact, I'm really supportive of that. I have been for a long time. You know that. But I don't personally think I'm going to get – I mean I could maybe get an ROI out of this or I could maybe not. And like I think part of the world's coming coming to understand that we – that this, this currency might not have the teeth that we thought it did. It doesn't mean there won't be a currency that does. It doesn't mean that, that – that I, and I do think that I'm working at that place. That's part of the reason behind my decision-making process. But I don't think that um, – I don't think that a fundamentally a synchronous protocol is going to be able to achieve the type of, type of things we're looking for. And it's going Some to be – Some people are looking for. Dude, I'm talking about real saturation here. I'm talking about real network effects, not 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 a bunch of cyberpunks and and a bunch of crypto anarchists. I'm talking, and I'm not not a bunch of like like um you know people who dump their life savings because they're like that. Um, I'm talking about people who who are, you know, way more conservative than us. And like I, I, those people are very still much not even on the fence. They're just sitting on the bench, you know, just like watching the thing going, look at those kids go. And that's what we look like to them. We look like we look like children. We need to grow up in order to do that. We need to actually be able to court enterprise in order to do that. We need better layer one protocols. You sound to me like somebody was talking about at the beginning of the Internet. And I remember that's what that's that's the, the comment I was, I was that too. mostly going to make is that if Bitcoin were a company like MySpace or something, I would agree with you, but Bitcoin is a community. And if you look at the first 10, 20, 30 years of our power system, our telephone system, TCP IP, you can make the exact same arguments you're making now at that time. And I think Bitcoin is more fluid, uh, ironically, than most companies, even though Bitcoin seems stagnant in a lot of ways, there are so many in, entrants in the race with their vested interests that, you know, unlike MySpace, where you know one person's making a decision and it goes this way or that way, or maybe a board is, but their interests are not aligned with the industry's interests. Their interests are aligned with themselves. And the people who are participating in Bitcoin, the coders, the miners, the retail, the traders, all of their interests align in a very small window, very narrow channel, and that is why we move slow. But that is also why I believe it will be the technology we need with the parts of the vision that are shared. You, I, I know that we're just talking on a phone and a you know a party line type thing, and you you can't fully describe easily the vision you're talking about. But the other person has said, well, what vision are you talking about? Because that's not the one I'm, I, I agree with that as well. The store of value argument is, is one of the ones that will need to be solved. And a global payment system cannot be solved with the constraints that yeah. come with a store of value. I think so, what... there are so two different use cases. I, and that's why we had the fork and that's why we have different implementations. Um, I'm not seeing the value in the store of value if you can't like, well, I'll tell you what, it's kept, me alive, it's kept me alive for, 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 for you know, uh, uh, seven years. Sorry. I mean, congratulations. I appreciate, like, everything that, you know, that's great. But um, is that a quirk Not, of society? Sorry, or is I, it, I really like the idea of just is having that a, my own un, un, unmediated currency. Is that yeah, a quirk of society, though, one. that you're able to survive on this, though? Like, that's what I think of it as. It's kind of a quirk of society. That society's going through a transitional period. We're trying to understand a new concept. We're trying to wrap our heads around how we structure it. Like, we're going from – this is a drastic change, by the way. I don't want to sound anti-cryptocurrency. I'm very much pro. 
But this is a drastic change. We're going from, you Dude, know, man, like, we, this is a drastic to, change, just like MP3 and file sharing was. And you know, I don't think it's even as bigger than that. The difference. Yeah, oh, this is this is. I agree. By an order of magnitude, bigger. several orders of magnitude. We're going from like paper money fiat to like to like li literally like like a whole money. new way of doing society. And like I do think I do see that, and I align with that. But at the same time, I have to say, okay, these synchronous protocols aren't going to cut it. And so for me, it's like I can invest in myself a little better right now because I can't guess what's going to happen to Bitcoin. You can't guess what's going to happen to what it is that you're working on either. I couldn't case. guess that Kanye well, West was going to release a, a to. gospel album, but that happened. But either way, so. I'm talking when I talk about myself, I'm not saying like I'm putting money into the company I work for. I'm talking about literally keeping like myself. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, this was an interesting discussion. We didn't even get to the other talking points. Really, Dimitri? You can tell that Kanye West is going to do a gospel album. When the fuck did you hop in the call? <laughs> Hello, what's up? I didn't even. I, I'm not looking at the the. Uh, can you repeat it? Screen. I said, "How could you not tell that Kanye West was going to do a gospel album? <laughs> it was coming miles and miles away." I think it's. A bunch of BS, but I don't want to go on my tangent with that, and we get lost in About the sauce. About Kanye, Mr. Yeah, Fish Sticks. I, I can't take that, dude. Um, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna respell my name though. I'll be Wanye, just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> I can take it. Um, okay, so we didn't really say anything when uh, uh, do, revolving or huh? Yeah, one 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 more thing on on the tweeting an address if, if only there was some sort of square graphical representation that we could use to represent complex data in a tweet that that would be really really cool shit what <laughs> if there has to be something we could do to put a lightning address into a square image a coded square if we'll figure it out and no color either just we'll just black and white it, it needs gonna... to be simple we're gonna that's that just me, by the way, that's just me picking on lightning. You know that, right? Like, it's, 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 it's not like I don't think the yeah. way to get around that. Like, right. That's not the issue. Right? Just... I think a dozen ways to get around that. But yeah. it's just me picking on that. That's just me picking on you. What, that's what just I me think picking is... on you. It's just, it's just all fun. What I think is funny is like since I was a kid, like literally like 11 years old, like QR codes have been trying to take off and nothing is going to get them to take off. Like, I, I just don't see Americans. Like, I know they're taking off in maybe China, Japan, uh, Korea especially. But, like, not the North Korea. Definitely not there. But in America, it's like people just refuse to pull out their smartphone and use QR codes for stuff unless it's like... Dude, Americans real, elected like, it's Trump. so much easier to just click yeah. a fucking link. Like, if somebody's tweeting something, you just want to click the link. You don't want to, like, like you know, like, it's just so, like, just click the link. Like, that's yeah. how we kind of, yeah. But if you see them, like, around, like, on the street, you might you might use it. If there's on if it's on a packaging, you might use it because yeah. there's no link to click. But the user experience is, you know, they'd keep trying to use it for things that could just be used with links. If the industry implemented it in America, you guys would use it. That's true. If that's I'm what sorry, the what industry implement. If the industry or if companies implemented that as a payment system, then you guys would be using it. Forget about it even being crypto. Yeah. But if that's what that's what people were, if that's what uh, commercial interests were implementing in America, Americans wouldn't have any other choice but to use it. I mean, no shit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So saying I don't see Americans doing using it is kind of like a misnomer. You could say I don't see corp, I don't see you know uh, business interests implementing it would be a uh, you know, a defendable statement. Well, that's, I guess that's what I'm trying to say. I just What's going on with China? Like, oh. <laughs> China. Every beggar China. on every corner, China. every beggar on every corner in China has a fucking QR code that you can give them coins. That's, that's how, bananas. that's how serious it is in China. You know, they're way but, forward thinking with their is, homelessness. It's a top down system where once the top says this is the way it is, that's how it's implemented. That's not how the states operate. Oh yeah, come on, imagine. man! As if the states is not a, is not a top down system that well, doesn't yes, say this is how it's going to operate. For example, I mean, my grandmother friends. refused to use a debit card. My mother literally had to do like get out of the car, go to the ATM to pull money when the bank was still you know too full. You can still go to places and get and still write checks. Your grandma's going to die, 
and her well, grandkids are going to be using Jesus QR Christ. codes. Damn, dude, what the <laughs> fuck? Jesus Christ, Exile sorry, Surfer. You say, say that with a little more softness. Dude, it, it, it's QR not code. like, it, it wasn't like you said, it was the tone in which you yeah, said, it was like, your like, grandma, I mean, your grandma's going to die. <laughs> we get, <laughs> well, okay, I mean, you, come on, you guys. Take we get the finality of it. We know what you meant. It was just funny. You write checks. That is still a system that still exists. I see what you're saying. Main systems of payments in the United States. So I, I work in the payments industry, and and in regard to top down or bottom up, um, the, every major player in the U.S. and I'm talking the Mastercards, the Visas, the Chases, um, they wish they were top down, but every uh, uh, innovation, quote unquote innovation that they have, is this risk maneuver of whether they think people will adopt it. And, and sometimes they just don't. And there's a bunch of this, these examples um, over the past 10 years where they've tried to institute stuff. And so what you end up getting is a whole bunch of mid-level and mid-top level executives who are terrified for their jobs and they're hoping an adoption tracks. And QR, like it just doesn't, it doesn't test well in the focus groups here. And so they won't implement it. So you're, you're all both right. Like, yeah, if it were top down implemented, it would be used, but the bottom up users are really resistant. At least she's totally right. Like people write checks, people like paper checks and the, it's really hard the bottom -up to get people to move people Trump. off the paper checks. Yeah. To, and so I, but I'm sorry, but I'm sorry, but I don't, I mean, I mean, I was born in America. I've been out of it, living here across the ocean for 27 years and looking at it, and I'm sorry, but y'all are fucking dumb as fuck. That's really. okay. Thanks. I mean, I agree. <laughs> thank, I guess you I'll know. say thank you. That's, that's, a pretty, right. that's a pretty broad bush. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, I just, that's, I just that's think like, that's that like calling a race a certain thing dumb. or you know, a gender or anything. So well, that, mean, like, that, that broad brush is not well taken. What he's seeing is kind of the, like a societal sh thing I've seen. Like you, you, if you look through history, like there's, there tends to be like this, this gear towards like giving democracy, democratization, which is its own kind of sort of decentralization almost, you know, the power to the people and stuff. But the thing is like, people can't guide a ship very well. It takes a captain. And so what we see is this shift where societies go very, very open and liberal. And then they start, breaking down a little because they can't take care of the fundamentals like the water crisis in Flint, Michigan, um, or, you know, like, uh, dealing with electricity problems in California because they're shutting things off so that they can, you know, prevent forest fires because totally that's the cause rather than just fixing the infrastructure to be more safe. And so you have these issues where like things start breaking down because, uh, you know, a dem democratic society can't come to a decision quickly enough to stay on top of the problems. And then they go to like this more autocratic, like, like strong, like in, you know, center authoritarian style government, which, you know, is like a strongman candidate like Trump would be very appealing to people who look around them and go, shit's fucked. So like, I get where what's going on. I think we'll shift back to like a more sane America at some point. I just think we're probably like 10, 15 years out. Two generations. Hey, but like, I mean, I love how people like to shit on America. I'm not one of those people. Um, but I'm very the opposite. I'm at what you call a little patriotic myself. But like, it's not like other countries are doing great. Like my sister's from Zimbabwe and she's like, yeah, I'd never, ever fucking go back there. Like they don't even have roads. And but they've got these giant cities full of people walking around doing dumb shit all day. Like, there's plenty of countries on the planet that do bad. America's doing just fine, man. When I flush the tour, we really are. We're in the we're in the top five percent for sure. We're doing like, we're doing just fine. Like, there's baby Trump over in Great Britain, like right now doing crazy shit too. Like, we're doing all right. Like, Trump was just like a little hiccup. Hiccup. We got some hiccup in our giddy up, but we're gonna do. Yeah, just fine. it's I I when I when I say y'all are dumb. Or we're all dumb. Oh no, I am a dumb Since, individual. I watch reality you know, television. No, no, but, no. But I, but I, I don't really. I too saw the presidential it's, debates. It's, it's, all the big brothers. So, so D, you asked about you know what what could make Bitcoin go to zero, and I put this in the Slack, and I think um, a Steam it or Medium post before, and and one of the things that I think is a is a major threat to you know the actual Bitcoin with a capital B. Uh, value going down, and that would be a, a a properly executed Fed coin, you know, one where you know the government actually got their stable quote unquote coin. They so. uh, offered airdrops to any cryptocurrency users. They did universal basic income. They required you to pay your taxes with it. Those three things 
Bitcoin is dead. Yeah, so Absolutely. if they actually executed it properly. But that's this not going to happen through, hold through us first. Hold it's going to be a smaller country that does that first. This is a phenomenal um, idea that, that Wayne has actually had. I've heard it uh, a couple times now. I want you to elucidate on it, Wayne, but we've got to cut to an interview because we've been going for a little while. Um, so we'll talk about that after the interview shortly. Um, but um, damn, there's like three other things we were supposed to talk about we didn't get to. Oh, well, there's always time in crypto. Um, so we interviewed a man named Norm. He makes lightning in a box. <laughs> uh, sorry, I was thinking about your joke, Wayne. Um, he makes lightning in a box, and it's a competitor to Casa, Casa Hoddle. Um, you open a box and you plug it in, and you've got the lightning network. Boom, it's that easy. Boom, I should do a commercial for it. Um, you just you, did. There we go. Um, this guy's kind of cool. He's just a tinkerer. He's like he's like one of those those uh those unique people that you meet in life. That's like clocks out of work, goes into his garage, starts tinkering with shit. He's a tinker. He's a he's a he's a he's a inventor. He's a modern day inventor. And he was like, you know what? This area of what I'm trying to do with Bitcoin sucks. So I'm just gonna make this out of the box lightning node that anyone can spark up, and it comes with BTC Pay. It is a BTC Pay node out of the gate, which um, is kind of sexy because I used BTC Pay earlier this year, and it I used Lightning payments with it i bought a refrigerator magnet for four dollars and some odd cents and that payment took about three seconds to do and it was smooth um got emailed a receipt like btc pay is doing it right um yeah so check out this interview uh with light with norm from lightning in a box here it is Hey everyone, it's another Bitcoin podcast interview, and uh, we're diving in straight to the deep end this time, straight into the interview. We're here with Norman Moore, CEO, Lightning in a Box. Uh, they're currently teaming up with Rick V for Crypto Cloaks for the Build a Node project. But I would like for you, Norman. Well, first, welcome to the show. Hi. Hey. Uh, how about you? Uh, do do the audience a favor and and introduce yourself like where you're from what's your background how'd you fall into crypto do, do you even like being in crypto now that you've got a better taste of it are you trying to <laughs> no <I'm> kidding <laughs> but give us give us your background man who are, who is norman Moore? all right so i live in a small rural town in western new york um my day job is for a payroll service uh in rochester new york um so I have a rather long commute, um, about an hour and 10 minutes. Gives me a lot of time to listen to podcasts such as yours. Um, <laughs> so uh, my day job is in payroll. I worked in that for like 25 years or more. Um, but I've always had an interest in technology and gadgets. And um, my current position doesn't let me play with enough toys and hardware. So I kind of have a hobby of tinkering with raspberry pies and different sorts of things at home uh how i fell into crypto um gosh over the years i'm sure i probably pissed away a lot of bitcoin um i remember buying sll on verwox or something for paypal and then turning that into bitcoin when it was pennies and kind of on and off gave up with the um got in and out of the idea of Bitcoin. Um, but uh, I got a bug again back in spring of 2016, and I had a hunch about Ethereum, and I put together an Ethereum mining rig um, with a bunch of used graphic graphics cards and was mining Ethereum when it was about $10 a coin, and Litecoin, or Ethereum Classic was a dollar. Um, and again, 
lost interest, sold that, bought some tokens, and just kind of got in and out of the the game. And before I, I didn't even realize Bitcoin had spiked the way it had in 2017. I was on to other things. Um, but then after that run up, I got interested again um, and uh, got into Lightning and started building some nodes with the various tutorials that were out there from uh, Staticus and the Raspberry Blitz and things like that. Um, uh, joined a local Bitcoin meetup and uh, um, the interest, I thought it was going to be more technical, this meetup, but it ended up being a lot more trading focused and I wasn't quite interested in that. Um, so I've been dabbling with the uh, nodes uh, ever since. I've I've got curious as in, in your experience with dabbling with the nodes. Um, typically, people like to start off when they try to uh, minimize the resources that they are required to run one of these things. They run it on a Raspberry Pi three or four now, which are a little more capable. And I think a lot of people realize that majority of blockchain nodes can can't be run on that. What was your experience with um, trying to I guess figure out the I guess, cheapest minimal resource? Are you back yet, man? Yeah, What's going on? Uh, you're sweating, bro. You gotta wipe your sweat. Sound settings back to normal. <laughs> yeah, that's the first time I think I've crashed your interview. At least my computer's crashed your interview. Cool. Anyway, uh, I can just start that whole line of questioning over if you're ready to get back in that. Sure. Right. Yeah, we didn't hear any of your. No. And now question you. You're you're slow. Cool. Uh, I'm offended by that, but. All right, uh, I'll just stop. Give me a few seconds to pause so we can cut it out and post post production, and then uh, I'll just. I. On. Okay, so um, I'm kind of curious as to your experience in the process of figuring out what resources are required to run a like um, limited resource node. So like the, like the goal in trying to like help people build nodes is just trying to try to help them participate in the network for the cheapest amount of money for the sm with the smallest amount of like footprint and the resources. And I think a Raspberry Pi is shown to be insufficient, especially if you want to run like a full Bitcoin node. Like how, how have you how have you dealt with the process of trying to figure that out? Um, I think I built my first node using uh, an Odroid. Um, HC2, which was a little computer that you know you, has a SATA um, connection. You just put a two and a half inch hard drive on it and boot up Linux like a Raspberry Pi, but it has a two gig of memory and a uh, better processor. That seemed fairly capable. I built, built that and had um, installed C Lightning with um, a little nano POS application as sort of a proof of, proof of concept. Um, that I took around to the Bitcoin meetups and was showing people, hey, this is lightning. Um, it's pretty cool. I think Eclair at the time had maybe 500 downloads on the Android app, and I was maybe in the top 300 first nodes to come online with that um, on, the, on the main net. Uh, obviously, the holy grail would be a Raspberry Pi, um, but you're right. The, the Raspberry Blitz is fairly capable if you... FTP or, or download the um, blockchain ahead of time. Um, I, I've got pretty proficient at copying the blockchain from one drive to another and being able to, you know, slip the slip, you know, another application on top of it. Uh, and uh, the I've tried uh, the Atom Pi, Atomic Pi. I think um, I got one of those. I've got a um, I tried putting it on a NVIDIA um, Nano, the, the robotics computer that NVIDIA just mm -hmm. came out with that has a graphics card in it. Um, so I kind of dabbled all the way around, but definitely, I guess that's the thing, in my opinion, you can't, uh, you can't assume that things are going to stay the way they are. A couple months ago when the Raspberry Pi 4 came out, I mean, it was, it's just a incredible um, improvement in, in processing speed and uh, memory and uh, with the USB 3.0 I mean that now suddenly we have something that can that makes sense to run a raspberry to, to run a node on 
um, especially if you put it in a cool little box like this um, where it's got the solder drive and everything built up together. Um, so yeah, it's, it's an evolution and you can't get, you can't, you kind of have to pivot once in a while and realize that, hey, what you're doing might not work. Um, putting a BTC based server on a Raspberry Pi 3 um, is certainly going to stress the machine out and not be pleasant. Um, but the Raspberry Blitz, on the other hand, is fairly capable on the Raspberry Pi 3. It doesn't have the overhead of Docker. Um, and uh, it's, you have to kind of copy the blockchain ahead of time, too, if you don't, if you don't want to spend a month doing it. Hmm. So we were talking about just outside the interview and you in your introduction you noticed that you i noticed that you fell in and out of love with bitcoin and crypto and could you kind of like expand on that for the audience because they didn't get to hear that awesome little conversation right <laughs> well i mentioned i mean i i i tend to spend my free time browsing on the internet and dabbling with little computers and whatnot um and i'm certain over the years i've stumbled upon Bitcoin. Uh, I mentioned I traded on Verwox and some obscure exchanges before there was even Mt. Gox. Um, but, you know, it, I, you see the potential, but not the usage. Um, and I really think the run up in 2017 was kind of a fluke. But uh, I mean, I don't know. I, uh, um, I guess I didn't have the, the, the foresight or the uh, fortitude to, to stick with it from you know, a dollar to 20,000. Um, I probably got in and out and made yeah. some money here and there. Um, you know, I, I made you, some money on. Do you mind me asking your most frivolous purchase with Bitcoin? <laughs> <Are> you, <laughs> I'm willing to share. Oh, I regret not buying one of those Cassius coins. Um, oh yeah, I remember those. When they were selling for about 50 bucks. When they actually had Bitcoin on them when you sent them? Yeah, yeah, right. The actual, right. You, you get the coin and that. Um, most frivolous spend on Bitcoin. I honestly don't know. Um, I never got, I never got into, uh, Silk Road or the dark side of, um, things. I mean, I, I'm, I'm spending a lot of money in testing, a lot of coins in testing right now. I've bought stickers. I've bought, you know, nodes, um, I really can't say I've spent anything frivolously. Never. I, I paid my thousand. cell phone bill for a year with Bitcoin. That's one of the biggest regrets of my life. I think. I think. It's, oh, shit. Say. <laughs> <laughs> Depending on when you did that. Yeah, it was prior to 2017, so that's all. All you need to know. I don't feel great about it, but hey, got the T-shirt, got the coffee mug. There's all to get here. Right. So, so lightning brought you back in the game. You're like, oh, I got Bitcoin. I'm out. It's boring. Oh, Mal Gox, I'm out. It's crazy. And then lightning brings you back. Um, lightning catches a lot of flack though, because I don't know if there's any other way to put it than it kind of sucks right now. I wish there were a more technical term for it, but it's rough on the user. So um, how, how it it. <sighs> If you then I guess you're using the wrong tools. I mean, I have oh nice. I have a node that's running BTC Pay server. I connect Zap to it from my desktop and my phone, and I've yet to find an invoice I can't pay. So, um, I mean, if you dig deep enough, there's there's a Breeze wallet that's fairly seamless. You you drop the coin on it, and you have a lightning lightning cap spend capability within a few minutes that runs on Neutrino. Um, so I think you have to kind of dig deep to find the, the tools that are working and some of them may not be the mainstream right now, but there's a lot of interesting projects. Um, I say zap plus BTC pay server is cool. Um, I can generate an invoice on this little thing, um, and, and pay for it. Is that a good uh, uh, this is that, um, uh, it's, a. Uh, M5 stack. It's a little ESP32. It's connecting to open node. If I pre press, um, make a generate an invoice here. Um, this is a little project that, um, 
and I can just scan that with my phone. Um, Looks like a TA-89. <laughs> using, the, using the Breeze wallet um, or Zap. Let me just open up Zap. Uh, we don't record audio, so like you, you walking through what you're doing is helpful. I'm sorry, we don't record video. And so I just want to pay this invoice. Opening up Zap, it's connected to BTC Pay server. Scan it. Oop, drop the phone. Let me try again. Uh, <laughs> yeah, let me try something else. So for those of you that can't see, he's he's got like a little a device. No one's got a little device, and he's generated an invoice on. He's about to pay it with his phone. Lightning fast, pun intended. <laughs> Is this yeah. like the ultimate goal of Lightning in a Box Is to try and get people like get the get the hardware devices put onto like in, in people's hands so they could have a more seamless experience? Um. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I find the technology pretty interesting. Um, I know there's a lot of competition out there and, uh, you know, I've, I've assisted. I don't want anyone to think that the tools I'm putting together um, or have used is anything that they couldn't do themselves. Um, uh, this little gadget here was something that um, oh, we go, on Twitter, he goes by uh, at BTC or BTC socialist. Um, he's in Wales. He does a lot of dabbling with these things. So I tend to chase after the, the cool little gadgets and see if I can do it myself. Um, there's obviously a learning curve to Bitcoin, Lightning, payment, POS, BTC pay server. Um, and I, I remember I first joined their Slack in March of 18. And they have made some small contributions to their documentation and testing. Um, I've helped Raspberry Blitz out uh, here and there with some uh, being able to connect BT BTC Pay server to it. So though I'm not a developer, I think I've helped you know in some small ways. I was on the um, number 87 on the uh, Lightning Torch. I passed it to Nicholas Dorier. Um, so from New York to Japan, uh, I've just you know tried to do little things along you know my learning journey. Uh, I think you reference like a video game. You gotta you gotta beat the minor monsters to get to the the big daddy. Um, and sometimes those big daddies are hard to conquer in a weekend. So you just keep plugging away at it. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know, I I don't want to I don't want to deploy or put out anything that's proprietary or that's uh, uh, that could be construed as something that I built myself uh, because all of this stuff is open source tools that anybody can play with. And I just like to teach and learn. And if the ultimate goal is merchant adoption of these tools, then um, I kind of want to be in a position to help consult and along those lines and get merchants set up and being able to use these things. Mm -hmm. So how'd you link up with Rick V over at Crypto Cloak? That seems like, uh, I, I don't know how, how, how the stars align there. Uh, well, I had built the Raspberry Blitz and saw that he was 3D printing cases for it. Um, mm. So I ordered uh, you know, one of his iterations of, of the um, Lightning node uh, shell that, that he produces. Um, that's gone through several iterations. Um, ventilation and heat, kind of an issue for the Raspberry Pi, especially with the 4. Um, and uh, I asked him to we're, we're, we're going to team up on a project we were calling BTC Pi, uh, BTC PI. Um, I bought the domain .co, um, and uh, he 3D printed a, a cool little case that for the Raspberry Pi 3. Um, but again, it, it didn't work so well with BTC Pay server, um, but the 4 is definitely um, a worthwhile proposition for that sort of thing okay yeah the four definitely made a lot of yeah. improvements to make it like a feasible thing to do assuming you can download the blockchain onto it and now i guess the big part of 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 what you're doing is making it turnkey in a sense that like people can just like at this the, the, the components you're using or you can just go buy them and then download the software and do all these things but a lot of people 
don't want to do that in a lot of ways. Just so they just want to buy something and use it. And then it's about kind of making it sexy and fun in terms of what Crypto Close is doing, which is putting kind of fun boxes, uh, conversation starters. So you can like run it on a desk at your house and someone asks what that is. You're like, oh, that's my, you know, Raspberry. That's my, that's my lightning node. So right. Like that. Yeah, I mean, I've sold notes. Oh, it's it's weird. The, the I've recently sold one in to a uh, client in Guam. I sold to Anguilla, Guernsey, the island of Guernsey, off of England and France, uh, Spain, Germany. Just a, a lot of uh, interesting locations around the world, um, and a lot of different use cases that people have come to me with and said, you know, can you get this to work? Some of the product, uh, one of the products I put on there was. Uh, using a little quotum case that's more of a you know a router type product yeah, um, i was looking at that so i'm actually in the, in, the, in, the, in the market for an open sense router and i was looking at yeah um that works pre pretty well with a ssd and uh four gig of ram for a for a btc pay server i've built a couple of those um and uh because again you know leaving something on all the time uh you want low power, but you also want low heat to not to um, fry the components. So I do a lot of experimenting with different pieces of hardware. Um, you have a particular favorite so, in terms of um, what you like using that's that's like efficient, low power, uh, can handle all the transactional load you really need, has enough you know storage, not really worry about changing things later on down the line. Uh, my first iteration it was were one of the first that I really was calling lightning in a box was using a gigabyte bricks um, uh, literal box <laughs> um, and uh, I kind of like those but they have uh, I think there was an Intel processor that four core the J1900 was a lot more a lot faster than what they're putting in it now so you kind of have to look hard to find that J1900 um, but that's my preferred sort of platform because it's capable it's a you know x86 processor it's you can put enough memory and hard drive, hard drive space in it it's compact and um, doesn't need ventilation or a fan uh, so that you can buy off the shelf for like three hundred dollars and you know, you're just you know a little above um, in terms of quality what you might get out of a, a raspberry pi um, or if you're concerned about that long term but certainly the raspberry pi platform is uh, very well supported. Um, you ever tried using a uh, nano PC? I thought about that. I had gone so far as put it, putting it in a shopping cart and never quite ordered it. <laughs> yeah, so I have, uh, I got a guide making for, it's for Ethereum, so like it, it can handle the, the, the state change, like the, 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 the state entries of syncing the full node on Ethereum. But I have, basically it's a nano PC T4 with a uh, half a, like, half a terabyte of uh, M.2 SSD on it. So it's it's capable of doing all that stuff. I got it all for under 300 bucks. So you can actually get quite a capable machine out of those things. And I mean, if it can do that, it can definitely sync Bitcoin and, and, and so on and so forth. Yeah, just for perspective, the, the, I mean, the Raspberry Pi 3, I mentioned, if it would literally take over a month to, to do it. Um, the Raspberry Pi 4 with an SSD will sync in about two and a half days um start to finish that's definitely a better price point <laughs> <laughs> so if you're you know looking for bang for your buck you definitely want to buy the raspberry pi 4 and don't bother with the one gigabyte version just get the four be done with it i got a question here this is a a moment you get to uh lay it out on the table why is lighting in a box better than the casa node casa hodl node or casa node i think this is what they call it why should I mean? Why should the community be SSing Yordi? Because it's better than <laughs> Jesus Christ. Because it's better than. <laughs> um, <laughs> I can't. I'm sorry. You can't even finish your question. Together. But you get what I'm trying to say. Well, I, than um, I mean, I got to give respect to them and what they've done. They've certainly pushed this um, concept to the masses. Um, I mean, I, personally, I think that what I'm what we do or have been doing is a bit more uh, less proprietary and more modular. Like you can buy the pie, you can buy the shell or not. You can mix up the hard drive or the fan or the, you know, 
shell um, and, and not be locked in uh, to you know someone else's concept of what it, what it should look like and, and what it should do. In my personal opinion, the only thing someone needs is is BTC Pay server. It, it's got the node. Uh, both Bitcoin and Lightning on chain and off chain. It's got Rider Lightning built into it. You can connect remotely with your phone. You can build a POS application out of it. You can connect it to a website, uh, WooCommerce. Um, you can do a crowdfunder. There's lots of things you can do with BTC Pay server. If you get the Casa node, when I first a friend of mine had one, um, it, it, it was a it was a node. But then you're kind of like, then what? What do I do with it now? So its first iteration was a little hard to use, in my opinion. Um, you know, when the average person who bought it had trouble opening router ports. Um, so BTC Pay Server just gives you more functionality. Um, the Raspberry Blitz, in my opinion, is a little more techy for the maker who wants to connect it to some servos or transistors and turn some things on and off. Um, so those two projects are open and they're definitely well, well maintained. Um, when CASA quote, open sourced their code. Um, I mean, they did so, but they didn't really give you the the instructions on how to put it all together. Um, so the code may be auditable, um, but it's uh, fairly complicated for the GPP to put that together and, and then emulate the CASA. Use of the acronyms, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I, so, another, so, another, uh, go ahead, sorry. So, yeah, so that's just, you know, my take on it was I think they're shooting for a little more, you know, of a proprietary market um, capture uh, than the open source ideas that are out there now. Yeah, I was going to say just to, as, as, a, as, a, as a small aside, another small um, like micro PC are those uh, UDOs, U-D-O-O, and they have both an ARM processor and, a, uh, and an Arduino processor on them. So if like more along the lines of that, other one you mentioned for tinkering and building servos and making it do stuff, like having a lightning node attached to something that does a bunch of stuff would probably be a really good solution. And I think they have a lot of different lines in terms of like how capable those machines are. Yeah, my NVIDIA Nano, I, had, I have high hopes for that. I, again, I'm not a developer, but I know someone who's pretty um, competent with Python. I, I want to give him this uh, NVIDIA robot and, and turn it into sort of a lightning powered robot i haven't gotten that far yet but um that was my idea for buying that was to put a full node on it and lightning um and then you know sort of pay this robot to go fetch your newspaper or something so you have a room in your house that's basically just it's covered in these small light lightning notes <laughs> <laughs> there's a corner of the house and you know a couple of years ago i mentioned mining ethereum and uh, i mean that kind of kept the living room warm uh, for a little that. bit, um, so no, I, I still have the the chassis for that, but it's turned off and I kind of stack these nodes on it. I need more space to to play. I need an actual workshop. I'm envious of Rick um, with his shop outside of his house that he can just go his his man shed um, to with his printers and his nodes and. It's like uh, I don't know. Like I, I, I feel like I'm a part of this 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 community of nerds that want a specific space to go nerd out in. Feel like you know, like you know, like my my grandpa had like a woodshed, right? Where he had all the tools, the right. tools things. But now it's like I want a like a a device shed where like I go out, leave the house, and work on things like this. Right. This is exactly how I feel. Um, and I'm you know, back in the day when. I remember reading the back page of like PC magazine, that big humongous like three inch catalog before the internet that you would buy computer components from. What the hell was it called? Uh, I know what you're was. talking about. I forget though. Um, there it's was not a PC the magazine. No. Um, <laughs> it was like a Bible, shit, Bible remember. kind of thing. It was huge. Uh, <laughs> and, and one of the articles in the back of that was like somebody's lab of doom and pepsi do you remember that there's a lab of doom and pepsi um no but i'll be googling it um an interesting sidebar i had met bill ziff once um so lab of doom and screensavers alice and bill yeah they were they, they're the hard edge of zdnet it was in the back of that computer shopper 
Um, yep. And uh, so I kind of always have their lab of doom and Pepsi in the back of my mind that I want to build. Although so in this day and age, I guess it'd have to be lab of steak and whiskey. Um, <laughs> so how, how do people like get involved? How do they help? How do they buy things? How do they tell you what they want? Uh, well, I have a you know the website lightninginabox.co. Um, uh, my Twitter handle is at lightninginabox. Um, I tend to retweet and um, interesting conversations or hardware and things that I find cool. Um, you can order the nodes. You can send me an email through that website, um, and uh, that's pretty much it. Hit me up on Twitter. No doubt. Well. I, I guess we have one question we'd like to ask you since you're one of the few people that we've interviewed that's been in this thing for almost the entire decade of its existence, Bitcoin, crypto, that is. In 10 words or less, can you describe Bitcoin? Oh, right now, okay. Bitcoin on the base layer is a savings account. On Lightning, it's a checking account. I like that. Oh, wow. I like that. I haven't. I, no one said. No one has ever said that or made that analogy, and I think it's appropriate. <laughs> How dare you, Corey? I literally said you that. have never said, said that. that. You're you're a liar. Oh my god! You have never said that. And I, and I, oh my god! It's now uh, objection. on you. Objection. It's now on you to then quote when you said that, so I can look it up because there's a record. We we publish everything. You've never said. I that. understand you're how our operation works, Corey. Open objection, Your Honor. Badgering. <laughs> Anyways, I totally agree with you that no, no, no. I said Litecoin is checking Bitcoin is savings. Still never That's what said I said. That. He's lying. I did. Oh my god. He said Litecoin is your checking. So, so yeah. So you were wrong. It was many moons ago. So we need to take <laughs> we need to take away his maxi badge. <laughs> <laughs> I'm definitely not a maximalist. I was told that to my face at a maximalist conference <laughs> you actually played the role of the guy in between so i guess you, you couldn't yeah. you couldn't be so <laughs> so are you going to the lightning conference in berlin anybody going there when is it this weekend oh no i'm i'm no. i'm not scared i'm not traveling until next next year i'm off yeah. the travel travel bandwagon i wish i could go the personal issues have kept me home but i would love to have gone there uh, maybe next year Maybe if they we bring it we have States. had um, that German. There's a German lighting developer. Um, he's kind of like he's like leading the way for lighting development. We have had him on the show. Good job, D. Um, what? I mean, that narrows it down. He's German. There's only one Germany, Corey. And then <laughs> I know I know who you're talking about. That's why it was C Lightning. I wish I could remember his name too. Yeah, it's a very forgettable name, but he's not a forgettable personality. Uh, but anyways, let's wrap that up. That's a, that's a great answer. I wish that analogy would like propagate because it makes a lot of sense. Um, people think that it's supposed to be cash. Bitcoin's supposed to be cash. But anyways, we're not going down that road. Thank you very much, Norman, for coming to the show. I appreciate it. And Thank uh, you for having me. Keep tinkering in your labs and keep selling lightning in a box because I think it's good to educate people on building stuff on their own because people need the stuff when I, people need it in their homes and if they want to use it, that's, that's a, it's a, it's a strong step forward. And then guides that had to do it themselves. If they can, if they, if they can, and being able to purchase them if they can. And we're back. Hope you enjoyed that interview with Norm, the inventor, the uh, founder of lightning in a box. It's wait here we go. It's his. It's your bits in a box. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah your bits in, it's your bits <laughs> in a box. Yeah. It's the it's the dick in a box. The, can I keep gotcha, my gotcha. can I keep my can I keep my bits in my underwear, please? Um. I put them in we, a box. we would all appreciate that. Yes. <laughs> you know. You gotta have that '90s yeah in the background whenever you say <laughs> whenever you say something in R and B. And you gotta smash it. Um, we hope You're you enjoy that. Black Street, there, man. I, I had, it took me a second to realize what you were doing. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, um, but right before the interview, Wayne, you were gonna bring up this what I call the government evil master plan. 
because it would be evil, but it would be evil for me because I'm a crypto fan enthusiast. So let, let's line this out for the people. Give the people what they want. You're talking about Fed coin. Yeah, a Fed coin. Well, right. Well, so so what this is what this is 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 not something that I'm a fan of or a proponent of. It's something that I I started thinking about after reading a few you know uh, future Fed coin articles and things, and it was more of a I wanted to to write it out because I I want to help prepare for it or know about it or see if we need to do some preparations and and it, it comes down to basically three main points. You know, one, you know, let's say the government. Uh, and maybe with the G20 or the G8, um, they all coordinate. You know, maybe the UN does this. So to put on whatever tinfoil hat you want, but, but some sort of Fed coin that, that's, that's Bitcoin-like. It is uh, blockchain. It may be federated. It may be uh, permissioned. You know, fill in the blank with whatever makes it more possible for you. But, you know, but the idea, let, let's say that they, they issue a Fed coin. Second thing, let's say that they then require taxes to be paid in that by some date that seems realistic to you. Five years out, 10 years out, two years out, whatever. Maybe you get a discount, you know, a 20% discount if you pay with FedCoin for the next five years, and then everyone has to, I mean, there's ways that this can be done to make it more palatable and where the GPP says, oh, well, that sounds good to me. I mean, why wouldn't I get that discount? Then... Uh, as part of that announcement, this, the next part is they say that, okay, look, we recognize fiat is an issue. Uh, we understand that inflation is an issue. Fiat's been artificial. You know, the government officially admits that, you know, fiat's artificially propped up. And, you know, we want to fix that. The way that we fix that is with this new FedCoin idea. And, you know, that'll actually fuel the frenzy so that more people so flock. Those- so those three points. And then, well, I have two. I, I have uh, the, the rest of it real quick is that there's an, there would be an airdrop of existing crypto, crypto holders to get, you know, if they burn their crypto, they get the Fed coin. So that, that is an instance. And then lastly, to satisfy a whole bunch of, you know, progressive slash left or anyone who wants to help the world. Uh, the universal basic income. They'll say, okay, look, this is how we do universal basic income. You'll get these Fed coins. You can only spend them for, you know, life-sustaining things, but everybody gets it. And since you're paying your taxes with it, there's some transparency. I mean, there's a whole bunch of things that could be added to that where a lot of people will, who, who don't know better will just say, oh, well, yes, this all seems a net positive to me. And I think that a, a mass adoption of something like that could send the free, you know, uh, if you take all the, you know, neutral, uh, cons- you know, uh, consensus and, you know, free open blockchains into oblivion. And that's, so, that's the spiel. So I, 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 I don't think it's an if. I don't, I think it's a when. It's an inevitability. And uh, we actually talked about this last time that I was on the show, mm-hmm. that I think that that's the end game. Is, is that this will happen. There will be uh, not only individual Fed coins, but there will be a consolidated global Fed coin. And the, and the point that I'm making, though, is, is that the standard is, for something like that, Bitcoin. If it doesn't match that standard, it won't function. It mm. is the bar. I'd say low bar. Mm. Yeah, see, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in, terms of, mm. in terms of security, it's not, and that's the security, most important thing. Bitcoin's pretty so insecure. I think, that, I think, I think a lot of people don't whatever, realize how whatever group is. of people that come, whatever tinfoil hat you put on that comes together and consolidates it, it's inevitable that there will be a a a global Fed coin with a monetary policy, a sound money monetary, a hard money monetary policy, and not because I believe it in such. Uh, it's just that. They need to function. It will be in their interest to do that the glo- at a global level. And mm-hmm. that's not for the end user like you and me. It's for corporate business. It's for global trade. It will, it's necessary for people to be able to plan. At some point, 
the adults will be in the room and recognize that all of this speculative fiction uh, of the way that we've done fiat and, and these unpredictable monetary policies, they will need to implement a, an, a, you know, a, an inflation rate that people know 10, 20, 30, 50, 100 years out, now we can plan. Whatever it is that we want to plan for, whether it's speculative yeah. you know, growth or whether it's actually eco-fascism, uh, save the planet or whatever it is, the, 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 the interest alignment is that there is going to be a global Fed coin at some point. And I've always wanted to see that, even though I, I, I tailor myself as a crypto anarchist and a cypherpunk, um, I would prefer, and even though I'm shitting on America, I, I think that the state uh, and corporate interests need to be reformed and not, and not you know, thrown out with the bathwater. Yeah, it's kind so of hilarious I, to me. I get I get like labeled a, a statist on like Twitter if I say we need a Fed coin. Like like it's like no, like this is what we're fighting for. Like, what do you think? Bitcoin is basically its own country. Ethereum is basically its own country as it is. It has its own economy. It has its own you know, it it is literally paying people to to operate under it. It's 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 interesting in that that regard. It's like a completely decentralized country. In a, a but the end respect. game is that this is adopted. This is adopted by states and corporate interests. Yep. That it's co-opted. I've thought that from the beginning. I mean, I love having my non-state money, but my true like you know inner interest as a human being that actually cares about other people and cares about society and systems is I want to see it become more efficient. And I yeah. think that and the, the discussion paradox. is always, is, is always about the end user. We need to reform actually the financial, the legacy institutions, uh, you know, and legacy economics need to be reformed at the top level. Um, and that's where I'm saying, you know, it's a trickle down effect, not in terms of trickle down in the wealth value, but a trickle down effect in all of the things that we win by those efficiencies of scale. Um, so, you know, it's really cool to see alignment on that in this group between uh, between you guys that we all, you know, have, see that as an as an end game. The question is how it is that we get there and what it's going to be. Um, whether or not Bitcoin goes to zero or not, um, I don't think that Bitcoin is you know hyper bitcoinization is the thing that really you know kills me more than anything i mean it, bitcoin is not the black hole that's going to be sucking in the world's the world's wealth it's, it's going to be something it's going to be something else you know it's going to be, be another asset it's things. going to be another asset with history like it's not very secure by the way i just want to go out there even though it is pretty secure the trade off in nakamoto consensus is that it shows liveness over security and uh, over safety and like that is that 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 is evident in the way that it's structured right now. It only takes like four phone calls to completely reverse a transaction in Bitcoin right now. If you got all four of those people on, on, on the phone, the mining pool, op the, the miners, operators, they would be able to completely reverse a transaction at will. And that's not what I consider safe. Um, well, we want a large diversity of equally uh, right. relatively Yeah, but the argument is, is that there's validators. not really the incentive. There. There's not this. really this. an incentive hold, there. Hold up, it, Even though if it's... Uh, did I derail? Did I derail? Hold hold no. Sorry. I'm throwing the flag on that as a big Red card. Who's saying that? No, the miners yeah. aren't going to collude. It's not going to happen. You're worried and about. I don't think it's whether or not. It's, no, it's, I'm not. It's I'm not worried safe. about that. What I'm saying is, is that the way the game works, they're too. It's too high of a risk for them to do that, and that's why they don't. Until it's not. Yeah. And that's never going to be an until because you don't know why that. would you up. why would you sabotage the very thing that's paying your bills? Why are we're you supposed to, we're supposed to be working from first principles here? All right. And, and the first principle of decentralization is that that kind of thing can't happen. And yet it can. So saying that. No, saying that, no, no, no. That, that's also a misnomer. It's not that it can't happen is that you design for the best possible scenario to prevent it from happening. It doesn't there are better say designs, that you can't. But, yeah? yeah, I know. I know. There are better designs okay. on them. So. I mean, look, all I'm saying is, like, why are you going to bite the hand that feeds you? So, like, all right, yo, let's get together. Hey, why don't you call me on a Tuesday? We'll go golfing. We're going to fuck up the very thing that pays our bills. That's not going to happen, man. Call on, that's man, not we have, happen. There is a huge history of people, Cleopatra and, and uh, was it um, uh, Mark Antony, bit the hand that fed them. 
bit him in the ass, right? There's a huge history of dumbasses doing exactly that. So I'm not sure I'm aligned with you in the idea that people don't bite the hand that feeds them is is the is the the way we're supposed to design our, our fundamental economic models of the globe. Like, I don't think that's how we want to do it. Well, I mean, typically we do do that. And then what happens is everything gets so fucked. We're just like, well, now we're just going to have to shoot each other in the face. And that's well, usually look, the world what, will keep ticking on, but I think we can do that's better. Usually what the world gets to, but like, I hope it doesn't get to that point again. But I mean, that's some, why would they do that? That seems like pure fuckery. That's fuckery at its finest. That's high grade fuckery. You can snort it. <laughs> and so coming and back for to the where comment that said that Bitcoin, well, that what, what Bitcoin is, is or is not as secure as people think it is, or it's just not very secure. I, I don't think it's the pendulum or a, a binary option of is it secure or not. It's how secure is it, and yeah. is there something that's more secure? And yeah, yeah. I would say. Sure. If you could make four phone calls and, and you and you whittle it down to that that kind of um, statement, is it still more secure than the next best thing? So, so all of the I'm not going to shill, but there's a reason I pulled out of Bitcoin. Core, all of the Bitcoin pro, uh, core programmers that I know and all of the older people in crypto that I know would all shift to a different coin if it was better. I don't know anybody that wouldn't move to a better coin. That is that's I'm been in this from the that. beginning, you know. Um, I, I, you know, I would, if there was a better coin, I'd move and it had the network effect, I'd move, but I haven't seen it yet. I mean, there's like, you know, little bits and pieces that you can play around with. Monero is kind of interesting, you know, Zcash is, Zcash is, 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 is not a longevity coin. Zcash is a, is a sandbox for potential, uh, you know, implementation onto the Bitcoin stack. Um, you know, but. I love all of the experimentation that's going on in Ethereum. Andy, do you see fintech ever adopting Bitcoin? Is Andy here? I, Andy no, Andy left. Oh, Andy left. Yeah. Shit. Um, yeah. Well, I don't think you'd do it natively. You'd have to do it through liquid or some sort of fetching. Uh oh, somebody's hanging off the cliff of a mountain. There's a lot of wind. Yeah, a side chain or a drive chain or some other, you know, some some other thing on on top. Or a sub network, yeah. With a yeah. good foundational atomic swaps built in and strong safety guarantees as well. It's parallelized. So here's the thing is, is that <laughs> like describing it, the, the, big, the, big, the big elephant in the room, you know, is, is, is custodial solutions, right? I mean, the average person, this is where it is that I, that I'll, that I'll give a head nod to grandma and say, you know, she doesn't need to die. It, there does need to be a solution for grandma. You know that that and and the average person wants a custodial solution. The average person doesn't want responsibility. And um, I mean, just look at what two billion in transaction uh, uh, fees in profit from Coinbase, oh, right? Jesus Christ! Yeah. Right. One billion. One billion on for you know for Bitcoin for the miners for transaction fees, and two billion is what is what Coinbase has made. And you know, uh, most people want that actually. Most people want that. And, and you mentioned this that, also though. about, you know, transaction, you know, being able to reverse a fraudulent transaction and stuff. And level two solutions, if they were to be based on Bitcoin, if finance would adopt Bitcoin, you know, will need to provide that. And that's, yeah. you know, I guess in some form, you know, basically, you know, it's just it's just it's just risk management at some point. But again, I, I don't I just don't think it's going to be Bitcoin. <laughs> I mean, that's. I mean, whatever happens, you can't stop humans from being humans. And whatever system we did choose to build, the people that know the most about it are going to be the people that are elevated to points of central authority. Well, look at, we have an oligarchy in Bitcoin. We have an oligarchy in Ethereum. We have oligarchies in, in, you know, in crypto. I mean, yeah, we could say oligarchy, but Bitcoin's entire market is like what? How many figures? It's like triple digit billions. Is it? No, it's it's not even triple digit billions anymore. 150, I don't even know anymore. 150, 150 billion? billion. Yeah. I mean, 150 billion. Yeah. If you look at the global scale, that's just cute. Like it's really cute. Yeah, sure, of course. Yeah, that's the thing. Is like <laughs> I agree with that. Amazon could <laughs> like, buy that. Like you know what I mean? Like come I agree on. With that. I agree like, with that. And, you, and when your safety model is around, oh, it's too expensive for people to like. Fuck you. No, it's not. Like literally, like it's not that expensive yet. Like it's just not. Like. 
Bitcoin is not expensive for people yet. It, well, people, I don't know why people in their you right mind don't get that. Like, that. people still think that they have to buy one whole Bitcoin, and I feel like I can't change exactly that. Exactly what I wanted to say right now. Yeah, I could we be a soldier of the well. truth for the yeah. my the rest of my life, and they're like, "Yeah, but it's just so expensive." And I'm like, "No, it's." <sighs> Like that's what it always comes down to. I'm like, what do you mean it's expensive? That's it's why currency. I like the, the the that's why I like the new you know Satoshi mnemonics. You know, stacking, stacking sats. sats and and how many sats do you have? Do you have 100k sats? Do you have a million sats? It's like the pinball machines went from you know thousands to millions in the counters just to you know let people understand and and make it reasonable to themselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah, my dad had pinball machines. That's why I, I grew up with pinball machines in my garage and old Bally machines and stuff. And they just had they had four digits. Hmm. <laughs> the original pinball machines were just were just were four decimal places. And then when the uh, when the LED screens came in, or no, the the first count, the first electronic counter screens, you know, then all of a sudden we had six digits hmm. and seven digits. So, so did we go over any of the stuff we planned to go over this week? We talked about crypto going to zero, kind of. I know we were going to discuss I, that. I tried to segue as to Trump coin. Yeah, I tried to you segue did. into China. <laughs> we never talk. We never decided to talk about China. I don't think. Oh, I, I thought we were going to talk about China doing that. Uh, President, whatever. Oh, you guys were segueing. Winnie the Pooh. Yeah, I was oh. trying. I, well, I I was segueing with the Fed coin to the Trump coin. Yeah. That's so true. okay. So I mean, there's a lot that, of. There's, that there's segues the, into a DAO. Yeah. DAO. We really wanted to talk about that too. We oh, can just say well, what we segue, wanted to talk let's, about. Let's go from stable. Let's go from Fed coin into you know basically stable coins, and, which is the different plays that people want to do. Yeah. So Maybe there's going to be a can... lot of corporate plays, you know, with that. And this, right. this newest one is is uh, is from uh, the federal, uh, so, the, so the Fed appointment early Finance. appointment from Trump, you know. Uh, well, and also with the Biden. well, we've got to segue that we got to do a classic um a we got to do a classic uh, cliffhanger cuz I've I've got to go to my niece's soccer game here a little bit. <laughs> so, we've got to do a we've got to do a on the next episode with the uh, the Bitcoin podcast's crazy high noon crew. We're going to talk about this stable coin that somebody on Trump's administration is saying that the U.S. should build. And then we were also going to talk about the likelihood of Zuckerberg being a zombie in the Libra, in the Libra hearing this week. And then we were going to talk about DAOs. Um, we wanted to talk about a lot, but like, there's never that much time. So... Um, Sorry guys, maybe maybe next week. I mean, Corey will be around next week, so it'll even be that much more electrifying if we all hop on. But yeah, man, I'm down. I'm down right. for. You guys are in the day. Slack. You know what it is. We'll try to do it early on Saturday morning. Orange coin go up. Orange coin go up. That's right. Orange coin good. Um, so let, let's do some. There's some stuff I'm supposed to do here. I've been told. Hold on. <laughs> Don't forget to subscribe and rate us on. Sorry, I'm not a very good podcaster after almost five years of podcasting. Uh, so don't forget to subscribe and rate us on iTunes, because um, if you do that, then we'll go to the top of the charts, baby. And then more people hear the awesomeness that you just heard, and then you get to be a part of the cool crowd. Right? Dude, you're you supposed to, to say that in the beginning too, because like nobody's gotten to the, like, at this point. They're hearing you sh- like show the podcast, like ah, I'm just gonna stop. That's okay. Call it. It's okay. I hope they love us. <laughs> I hope they love us. That's what I'm going to So we've also got a Patreon. Smash that like button and subscribe, dog. Yeah. <laughs> subscribe, please. Yeah. Um, if you like what we do, um, you want to give us some support directly, we have a Patreon. Um, you can go to the bo- patreon.com slash the Bitcoin Podcast Network. Um, can't, can't, can't tweet a lightning transaction. Cannot tweet a lightning transaction. So don't give us any lightning payments. Um, we hope that you help us get to our first goal so we can, um, hire another part-time producer for the show, because if you like some of the changes that you're seeing with either our graphics, or you've noticed that we've got this awesome new intro and outro, and we, we're just kind of, 
we're trying to try and change a little bit to the better. So help us out there. Um, also hit up our Twitter accounts for updates on releases across the entire network. We've got hashing now, just the headers, dose of ether. Um, you can get lots of shit posting, um, <laughs> or insights. It's really hit or miss when it comes to us. Um, and finally, please join the Slack. Um, we but it's walk- real. Yeah, it's, it's hit or miss. You're either gonna get something awesome or a shit post, and that's just it's, that. It's honest, man. It's yeah. honest. We talk crypto all day, most days, um, in the Slack. If you go to the BitcoinPodcast.com and you join the Slack, you can find resources. People have found jobs because they've networked within the Slack. You can understand how wallets work and exchanges. There's traders in the Slack that will help you understand how to not lose your money when you click the clicks on an exchange. And then you're like, wait, where did my money go? And then you're like, wait, it's not coming back. What did I do? And, we're like, uh, if and you then don't Colin want- will be like, you just got to sell your Bitcoin like I did. Yeah. And you can ask Colin and he'll tell you how to sell your Bitcoin. Yep, that exactly. He'll tell you how to break even. Colin will tell you how to break even in Dude. Slack. Better, better break even than lose. Yeah, um, and you can get some industry insights, industry insights that you can only get from hanging out with people in the Slack all day. Because I mean, Colin and Corey both work in crypto at a very high level. Um, I mean, I've interviewed hundreds. I mean, literally almost half of a thousand people in crypto at this point. I don't, I've talked to all of them. Um, Grandma got run over by a Bitcoin. Wait, no, you never right. talked to Vitalik, did you? He's never been on the podcast, has he? I tried to talk to Vitalik, and he said, "Excuse me, I'm busy." And I was like, "All right, dude. All right, well, fuck you too, then." That's how my Vitalik experience <laughs> went in Mexico. <laughs> so, so like at, at DevCon, DevCon four last year in Prague, uh, some company made a um. Uh, you know the uh, Shepherd Fairy graphic obey, and they made it with uh, with with Vitalik's face on it, and it and the text was instead of obey, it was boodle, and uh, I was like, oh, this is fucking great, and so I got a copy of it, and I was and Vitalik was just about to go on stage on the main stage, and I and he was standing on the in the backstage wings, I was like, check it out, look at this shirt, you know Vitalik, I thought he would think it was really cool because I thought it was really cool, he looked at it. And he like took he took it out of my hand. He threw it down on the floor, and he literally like ran away. He just took it. Jeez, dude, that guy is <laughs> that guy is interesting. I he's, was like, he's, funny guy. I, he's <laughs> probably had it. I mean, like, think about it. He's like, he started this when he was really young. Yeah. You know, he got a lot of celebrity really quick for something that was supposed to be just an experiment, and like a lot of responsibility placed on him. I understand where he's coming from. Plus, he doesn't seem like he's very socially. You know, he doesn't like that. Like that, he's not built to be a celebrity, is what I'm trying to say, and yet he's put into that position. So it's, it's oh, not I surprising it was that it's he... funny. I mean, I, I, you know, I mean, I've I've seen Vitalik from the beginning in the space and 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 stuff, and I agree with you a, a lot of things that you say. I think he's developed a lot, uh, actually, I think in he has social too. skills and everything. He's really, he's really quite a, quite quite come forward. But uh, that was that was an interesting moment. But the guy is incredibly fucking busy. Yep, yep. You know, All right, well, you got to get, speaking of busy, you got to get to your, your niece's soccer game, right? I do. I do. All right. Um, All right. So last thing, there's not a lot of spam in our Slack and great memes. So people want to be there. If you do get spammy, like that weird person that came in last week and was like, join this exchange and get some free token drops, we will boot you. And we will boot you past. The ban hammer. That's right. We, we no free care. tokens in the Bitcoin podcast Slack. That's right. Um, we do have some things coming down the pipeline that are going to be very interesting. Um, we hope that you join the Slack and become a part of all that so you can find out what they are. All right. Well, um, that's your cliffhanger. That's another really call. Guy. Pamp it. Really okay. good. Okay, yeah, that means we need to go. All right. <laughs> All right. Shout out to Zoe Saldana, Zatsi Beats. Uh, play.